When building a gaming PC, the last thing you want to happen is for it to become out of date or even obsolete really quickly. You want to build a system that you can upgrade over the years to meet the ever-rising demands of the latest games. But just how do you go about future-proofing your system in the right way? And should you even future-proof at all? Well, in this video, we'll be looking at the pros and cons of each and a few key ways you can spec up your next build to make sure it stays nice and up-to-date in the years to come. Let's do this. The new NZXT function mechanical keyboards bring NZXT into the peripheral market with a bang. With full size TKL and mini TKL variants available, per key RGB backlighting and Gatoron mechanical switches, they're an impressive lineup. Alongside swappable keycaps, you also get hot swap key switches. Amazing to see for you keyboard nerds out there. Check out the black or white colorways available now at the links in the description below. Let's start with the basics and talk about what exactly future-proofing is. Now in theory, future-proofing is protecting your system against any future game releases and making sure that it's ready for the next-gen titles, despite the fact we don't actually know what the hardware requirements of these next-gen titles will be. Every time a new game comes out, it's like a big drum roll while everybody waits for the game developer's recommended system specs. And you look at your PC and go, damn, it's not good enough anymore. Three years ago, this was 1080p, high settings, no problems at all. Today, it's in the mud. But there are a few key ways to try and prevent this from happening, or at least alleviate the effects. A few key upgrade paths to try and keep open for strategic components to try and mitigate the damage of the latest demanding next-gen titles. But there are people on the flip side of this argument who will tell you that future-proofing is a complete waste of time. A great example of this is NVIDIA Ray Tracing and DLSS. If you'd bought a flagship 1080 Ti from NVIDIA's 10 series, you were not to know that ray tracing support was coming with the next gen cards just 12 or 18 months afterwards. And that's why spending loads and loads more money now in hopes that you might be okay for the future is probably a terrible idea. But that's not to say that you can't reduce the risks of your system becoming out of date in the next couple of years. The first major way to avoid this is on system RAM or memory. And I'm not gonna stand here and tell you to buy the latest Intel 12th gen chip and make sure you get DDR5, because as we've discovered on our website, that's not necessarily all that advantageous. What is advantageous is leaving RAM DIMM slots on your motherboard free for future upgrades. Make sure you pick up a motherboard with four RAM DIMM slots and only populate two right now. That way you'll still get dual channel performance, something you don't get with just one lonely RAM DIMM, but you can of course add in two more sticks later to double your amount of memory. Now of course if in 10 years time you want to upgrade your RAM, you're probably not going to be able to find the same kit, but kits like the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro will be around for another 5 years or so, making a future upgrade in 2 or 3 years time very easy. RAM is a great place to leave upgrades open. 5 years ago, 8 gigs of RAM was totally fine, now that's nowhere near enough and 16 gigs is the accepted norm. Heck, even 32 gigs for higher end builds is now a minimum requirement. It's not just RAM DIMM slots though on your motherboard you should look out for, but the specific motherboard you're going for is another great area to future-proof your build. Let's take AMD's X470 as an example. This much older motherboard originally launched for Ryzen 2000, supported right through to Ryzen 3 and 5000 with a BIOS update, making this motherboard great for future-proofing. An existing X570 board is probably not a great idea right now, as the new AMD chips are rumored to use a new CPU socket, or at least support DDR5, which will require new DIMM slots. That makes Intel's options like the B660 or Z690 chipsets potentially a better shout right now, as they're brand new platforms that are likely to support brand new CPUs for a couple of years to come. And even if they don't, you can pick up a used i7 to replace your current i3 or i5 chip a few years down the line, where AMD Ryzen chips at that point will be more out of date, at least the current Ryzen 3 and 5000 lineup. Another great area to future-proof your system is actually in the storage department. Now, James, storage? What did you want about? I'm happy with a slightly slower Windows boot. I don't need 7 gigabytes per second. I don't think that's a big deal. In that case, you could actually be wrong. The latest GPUs are starting to require faster SSDs, and slower storage is actually in of itself becoming a bottleneck. To be clear, that's not to say you should pick up a 2 terabyte Seagate Fire Cuda for $300, because although it's a great drive, shameless plug for our website review, 
is also very expensive and it's a great example of where you could try and future proof your system spending another $150 on an SSD when actually you could have pulled that money into a much better GPU that frankly would have given you far more performance now and lasted longer. Instead consider a good Gen 3 NVMe drive or an entry level Gen 4 drive of a 500 gig or 1 terabyte capacity. It's a great quality of life upgrade for now with faster Windows boot speeds and even slightly better game performance but will help later if you want to upgrade your GPU. Another good component to think about on future proofing is actually your case. Now that's not because you need a chassis to fit the largest GPUs out there. Most cases fit pretty large GPUs as it is and that's not the issue. And motherboard form factors aren't likely to change either. But if you want to add more cooling into your case later, you've gone for a budget build now but I'll perhaps think about dabbling into water cooling with a 240mm all-in-one or you just want to add in more powerful hardware which needs better cooling, more fans, greater airflow. Think about that at the moment. It's very cheap to get a case that supports a bit of liquid cooling or a case that's got plenty of fan spots with ventilation via a mesh panel on the front or the top of the chassis. To make a sensible decision on your case, maybe spend another $15 and you'll find yourself getting a lot, lot more for your money. Now those are good components to future-proof, but what about bad ones? Where do people often go wrong? Well, there is a lot of them. There's a lot of components people buy thinking, yes, this will be good in a few years time and a few years time comes and actually they just build a whole new system. Or really the upgrade path they envisage just isn't actually that beneficial. A great example is your power supply. If your system needs 300 watts of power right now, do not give it an 850 watt unit in anticipation that one day you might just buy a 3090 Ti. Spoiler alert, it's not going to happen. If you need a 400 watt power supply now, go for a 650 watt unit for a bit of headroom, but don't go silly with a really high wattage unit. Is that extra $50 really worthwhile when you could have another 16 gigs of RAM, a slightly higher end graphics card or a slightly better case, or in fact a combination of all three? No. Another area where people go wrong is their motherboard. Now this MSI Z690 Unify is a great board. One of my favourite Z690 boards in fact. But actually, is it particularly beneficial with a non-overclockable i5-12400? No. Because buying an expensive board in anticipation that one day you might go for an i9-12900K, a great CPU by the way, it's not very clever. Go for a cheaper B660 board, save yourself literally $200, upgrade to the 12600K and buy yourself a better GPU. A motherboard is a component where it's really, really easy to save money. As we explored in a recent video talking about overspending on your PC build. I think really it's about making sure you go for a balanced system. Make sure the case is good for future cooling and airflow options you might want to add in. Get a power supply with enough wattage for some more RAM, a few more hard drives, but nothing extreme. If you end up spending $500 on a new GPU in two years time, let's face it, you've probably got the money for a new power supply. And keep those RAM DIMM slots open. You don't need 64 gigs or maybe even 32 right now for a $1,000 system, but going for two DIMMs rather than four will not only save you money now but it will also save you money later on. Think about the platform you're building on. Is your CPU choice nice and up to date and therefore is the motherboard likely to support chip updates later down the line? If it's Intel right now, more likely. If it's AMD, less likely unless of course you want to go the used second hand route. Think about those key components, your RAM, CPU and GPU. But whatever you do, do not spend another $200 now to try and future proof your system for later when actually you're leaving so much free performance performance on the table. Optimize your build and make it the best you can for the budget. Make future proofing a nice second thought that you do consider, but don't let it be too central to your build. Live in the present. What is it they say? Carpe DM or something along those lines and build yourself a great build for the now. I'll link some of our favorite components in the description below, but thank you very much for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.